Hello and welcome to my new office. Today I'm going to be walking you through how to sew the willow wrap dress. I'm going to be using this blue gingham. And the only extras you're going to need for this project are, well, if you are doing the puppy sleeve, then you will need a little bit of elastic, a half inch will be perfect. And if you're not doing the puppy sleeve, you can forget about it. And all of the dresses are going to need a little bit of interfacing for the facings. And you can also use a little bit of interfacing on the waist ties if your fabric is very drapey and you want it to have a little bit more structure. So I've already printed out my pattern. So I'm just gonna finish cutting out the puppy sleeve and then I will walk you through cutting out the fabric. After you choose your size over here, cause you can toggle on and off the different sizes. So you can just print the one that you need, or maybe you can leave a couple on at the same time. I'm just going to use F, that is the size that fits me best, and then we're going to go to print. And you just want to make sure that it is at 100% here, and this page will fit on both letter and A4 size printer paper. So once that's good to go, you can hit print. Once you have everything printed, the first thing you really need to do is just make sure that you know, these squares are the appropriate size because if it's wrong, then the whole pattern's wrong. So that's looking great. We are going to cut off the bottom and the right side and then just use the guide and the instructions to put it all together. First row is all assembled. You just need to make sure that the little diamonds are all lined up. I like to go in rows and then put, you know, kind of columns together as I go. My assistant has come to help. Hamochi. Yeah? We're looking pretty good. We got one, two, well, under here, there's three rows, but we'll see how many I can get done with. Maybe, yeah, with you in the way. Okay, it's all assembled and you can see this whole bottom row is mainly the tie. So you could not print this and just use the measurements that are in the instructions if that's easier. There's also the print layout for A through H and there's also one that's A, through Q. So there's just some different ones in order to kind of make the layout different and, you know, different for different sizes to maybe save paper. So this is the A through H one. So I decided to do something different for this pattern where the two different sleeves are actually their own files. So this is the puffy sleeve and the short sleeve is in its own thing. And then the dress and the waist ties are all together. So you'll just find that there are separate files for the different pieces of the pattern. And I thought this might help make it easier and take up less pages if you're not doing the puffy sleeve or maybe you're not doing sleeves at all and you don't wanna to have to print them out, then this is gonna save you a lot of paper. I've put my pattern onto the fabric and I have different layouts in the instructions. It's really gonna depend on your fabric width how you know, much you can fit on to your fabric. Mine is fitting really nicely like this. This is just the front and the facing and one of the waist ties and a back facing. So the ties can go either um, with your grain line or with the cross grain, just whatever works better on your fabric. And then here are the back and the sleeve and the other waist tie that needs to be added. But first I'm gonna cut these out and then mark everything, cut my notches and so on and then I'll cut the rest. I just want to bring your attention to a few couple important markings. Of course, we have our dart. So we'll need to snip our dart legs right here. And the seam allowance is a half an inch or 1.25 centimeters. So just make sure your snip is a little bit shy of this number. We also need to mark the dart tip. So I find this easiest just to poke a pin into here, into the tip, and then use either chalk or a washable marker in order to mark the tip. And then we have a notch here where our sleeve will match. And then this over here, these are where the ties are going to go. So it's good to have these marked and then they're on this side as well. This is where one of the openings for the ties will go because you only need an opening on one side. You can pick whatever side works for you. One last thing is this here is a pivot point. This is where we're going to be joining the facing to the dress. And this is where we're going to pivot in order to keep our nice seam allowance. So I've just marked it here. So it's really nice and clear. So I'm going to mark those and then I'm going to cut the rest of my fabric. The back and the other tie are on the fabric. It does leave 
for me a lot of fabric on this side but i will save that for a future project and you can as well and then uh, the sleeve is quite wide it takes up nearly all of my fabric so i'm putting it like this and i have enough fabric no worries and i'm just going to cut this out and mark again there are some notches in the center back which is kind of special. It's a very interesting seam back here. It's a little curved, so there are no darts, and this is all to help it fit really nicely along your back. Then we have some dart um, notches here for the sleeve in the back, and again, the waist has those, and there was one on the hip in the front and on the back. Sorry, I mildly lied. We actually still need to cut the interfacing, and so that is what I'm about to do here. So I've actually... I've just put the back piece on like normal and I've kept the fabric for the front facing attached just because we want to be super duper careful that the neckline doesn't get stretched at all when we're manipulating the fabric because that can cause gaping and that is not what we want. So that's why the fabric is still attached to this and then I'm going to cut this interfacing and then we'll be ready to actually get into the sewing. Okay, so as I was saying before, I've left the paper pattern attached to the cutout fabric because it's really important that the neckline doesn't get stretched and in order to really prevent that from happening when we're manipulating and sewing the rest of the dress together, we're going to do a basting stitch just along this curve right here. And this will prevent it from getting stretched. So basting stitch is generally your longest stitch length on your machine. Mine goes up to five. Honestly, though, because this has a tendency to stretch because pretty much a lot of this is cut on the bias, I am going to maybe go down to like a four or you could go even smaller. If you really want to be sure that it is not going to stretch, you can go even smaller and then just sew within the seam allowance. So don't sew at a half inch, sew maybe at a quarter inch or six millimeters. That way you, it won't be visible when we sew the rest of the dress. And we're just going to sew the neckline. So I'm going to set it to my middle. I'm going to put it to three. So just one bump, half a millimeter more than my regular seam allowance. I just really want to try to prevent any gaping or any stretching that I can. So here we go. So I'm just going to sew along this curve here, just like this. No pulling, no stretching, just letting it go through the machine. We're going to do this to both of the left and right pieces of the front, and we're also going to repeat this for the facing pieces, because those are also cut in the same exact way. So just go off the edge. Okay, so I've done the basting stitch here, or the stay stitch on both front pieces and both front facings. You can see it right in here, just along this curved neckline edge. So I used a very small stitch length because I really wanted this not to budge. I didn't use any back tacking at the beginning and end, but we do this just before doing anything else. And actually next, we can add our interfacing to our casings. Next up is I finished with the facing, so they have all of their uh, interfacing attached. I did it to both. This is the back and the front is also all ready to go. That one also is good. So now we can do the darts. So on your reflected left and right bodice pieces, we marked our dart legs. And we have our dart tip here, so then we're just going to simply fold that so that our dart legs, the little notches, match each other. And we're just going to fold so that we have our dart all lined up and then just add in some pins. going to 
to begin, how we begin most stitches, which is with a few stitches forward and a back deck. We want this side to be really secure. And then our goal here is to, if you haven't drawn in the dart legs, is to just focus on getting to the point. So aim your needle directly at the point and you will create the correct dart legs. There's absolutely no shame in drawing in the dart legs if you're not comfortable just eyeballing this. And then we're not back tacking, we're lifting up and leaving a really long tail, tie a knot. That way it is nice and secure and a lot, it lays nicer than if you do a backpack. Here is the dart that we created. So it was like this, just along here to the dart tip and I tied my knot there. And then we're just going to bring this to the iron. If you have a pressing hand, that's really good for the dart tip. And we're just gonna press the rest of the dart intake down towards the waist. For order of operations, I think it's a really good time to just finish pretty much all of the edges with either surging or zigzagging, whatever is your preference. I'm going to literally do this to every single edge except for the armholes and the hem. And I'm going to do that on the facings, the front, the front facing, the back facing, facings, and then also on the back pieces. I'm going to do that. This is where I'm going to leave it tonight. I have done the dart. I have finished all of the edges and it's ready to go for some actual construction tomorrow. I am super excited about this gingham. That's all for today. I'm gonna to go do some computer work and I will see you tomorrow. Good morning, it is a new day. New hair, new outfit. I finished last night surging all of the edges so now i'm ready to sew there's only one thing i wanted to point out that sometimes when you surge or zigzag stitch it's easy to lose the notches so i'm just going to go back in and sniff those and then i'm going to be ready to put it together here's what i mean so here are some of my notches like when you do surging they get a little maybe a little hidden so you kind of have to pull your thing apart just a little bit to see better and I just don't want, want to make sure that we don't lose any of our notches that are going to help us put our pattern together. Let's start by putting the back, the center back seam together. So you need to grab one or both of your back pieces and we're going to match them. Everything is nice and surged on the edges. So it's going to actually make this really nice and easy. I like to use We do have one notch in the center back here. So make sure that that is aligned. That way you know that your center back seam is actually nice and aligned with each other. There we go. It was a teeny bit off without that notch. And then just come in and, you know, occasionally clip in some other areas. And like I talked about before, this is kind of a special center back seam. And you can probably see it's not what you're used to. Instead of there being a very straight center back, I have decided to curve it because our backs are not really straight. We do usually have some curve for our shoulder blades and it comes back in a little bit at our lower back. So this pattern focuses on not using darts in the back so that we can have a nice smooth nice fitted back but we achieve that by using this kind of funky curved back seam here so now that everything is in place we can bring this over to our machine and i pinned all the way down to the bottom and we're just going to sew this with our normal seam allowance of a half inch or 1.25 centimeters, and then we can move on. Actually, you know, you might as well also pin together the center back of the facings while we're here, just to do things more in groups. So again, these ones have notches to know which sides to match up, match your notches. Okay, and now let's 
to the center back seam of the dress. Center back seam is sewn on both the facing and along the dress's center back seam. And then we're just gonna go and press that open right now. Okay, so we have our back seam pressed. Now we can really start putting the dress together. We're going to put our front pieces with the back. So that means we can match the shoulder seams and the side seams all at once. So we're gonna get a lot of the dress body together right now. Shoulder seams and the side seams are all attached and ready to be sewn with our normal seam allowance. Just make sure that here, like the waist notches are lined up on the front and the back. Same with the hip notch. And don't worry about where the waist tie is gonna go, which side, just sew all the way down both of the side seams and we will deal with the opening of the tie later. This is a great time for a try on. You can just make sure that the hips are looking good for you. This pattern is a bit um, curvaceous, so it is entirely possible that you might want to slim down this hip curve, but I was the fit model for this, so this is what fits me super well. Make sure the back is looking good and everything's looking great, so it's time to just move on. The side seams are sewn for the dress and same with the shoulder seams are complete. So now what we're actually going to do is press these open. So both the side seam and the shoulder seams are going to be pressed open. This will just help reduce bulk. two ties. There is a shorter tie. This one is going to go just into the front and there is a longer tie and this one will actually go through the side seam and wrap around your back and come back to the front. That's why it is longer. So what we need to do is fold these in half and give them a press. Okay, so in the instructions it says to come and sew down this side and this side and we're going to leave one opening. I was told a little trick that first we're gonna sew this portion and then we're actually gonna fold over that seam allowance and then sew the next portion down. And this helps give like a really crisp corner over here. So we're gonna try that. I think it's going to be great. So first we're gonna sew across the shorter side. The little top is sewn and we're just going to fold it over like this, we can just do a little finger press. I don't think you need to actually press. And then we're going to sew with that folded down the longer side. And of course, finishing with a nice solid backpack. We just have this extra folded over portion and Normally I would trim the seam allowance here and I'm wondering if I should leave it. I'm gonna try flipping it and see what happens. I changed my mind. I am going to trim off the longer side seam allowance. I just, I feel like it's gonna be super bulky at the top if I don't, so I'm just gonna. There we go. And after sewing for 10 billion years, I still don't have a tube turner, which is I don't know why, so I think it's about, it's about time to get one. So in the meantime, I have a pen. So what we need to do is open this up a little bit and we're going to push our fingers to get it started. And then we're going to... Try 
my phone stopped recording right there. So anyways, we got this all good. It's looking pretty nice. I actually just did the other one and pressed it and I actually didn't trim the seam allowance and I feel like it worked really well. So you actually probably don't even need to cut trim down the seam allowance on the side. So I'm just gonna go and press this one. The straps are done, the waist ties. So let's push these off to the side for a second and we can come and grab our back facing and our front facings. And we're gonna want to match these right sides together. So this is how the, the fronts should be facing each other like this. And then we're going to fronts because these are the necklines. And then here we want to match the right sides together. So we'll match those together. So we're going to sew, sew those with the regular seam allowance. off to the side because right now we're going to first deal with the ties. So the side that you put the shorter tie on is going to be the side that wraps on top. So you can decide if you prefer, you know, which side you want to be in front. I think I want it to go on the right side. So there are the notches that we mentioned earlier. And you want to make sure that you're placing it right in between those notches. It should be a perfect fit. And I think I'll actually use a pin for this. Pin that in place. And you want to make sure that the raw end is the one that's facing over here. And I like to have the seam that we've just sewn on the bottom and the fold of the tie on top. I will bring you closer for the next one. Here we are a little bit closer. So now I have my longer tie and you can see we have the seam that we've just sewn and then there's the folded side. I like to have the folded side up and then here's our raw edge and the raw edge is the one we are aligning. So it's like this in between those notches and then pin in place. So you want your tie to be going that way. So raw edges in here and the finished edges are not attached right now. Right, okay, so now we're ready for bringing in the facing that we had finished before. So we wanna make sure we're matching the right sides to the right sides. And the best way is to start by pinning and stacking seam allowances. So I like to start at the shoulders shoulders together and then I like to pin in the center back. You have these nice three points up here to really keep everything in line. And now we can come and we can pin down the neckline. So the first thing is to probably match right here at the corner. That is very important that those two are lined up. It's almost like a notch having those two lined up there. And then let's match the neckline. And since we stay stitched both of these, there shouldn't be really any stretching. If you only stay stitched the dress, there is a chance that your facing could have warped or stretched while you were adding the interfacing or doing, you know, sewing the shoulder seams, whatever. So if that is slightly off, just know that you should be matching it to the dress length and easing in any excess that happened due to stretching. But because we stay stitched, we don't have an issue. So try not to skip that. I know it's kind of a boring step, but it does, it does make a difference. is attached and we're ready to sew around the neckline and down using one half inch seam allowance. So once you finish sewing the neckline, you are going to need to pivot. So we're going to come here and there's a pivot 
mark on the dress side so you could transfer it to this side or you just need to figure out how far you need to go before you leave your needle in, rotate, and have the same seam allowance for this side. I think the easiest would be to transfer the dress pivot point onto the facing if you're a little uncomfortable. And then just continue sewing down the rest of the way. With the facing now attached, we're going to do just a little cut right at this corner. And then we're going to do some understitching. So understitching is when you attach the seam allowance, so the part that is here, this amount past the seam, the seam allowance, to the lining or the facing. Yeah, so the hardest part here is there's this corner, right? We snipped this corner earlier. So I'm going to lay it so that the other portion is out of the way and we're just dealing with the neckline basically. I think the easiest thing is just to sew that down and leave a little back tag. And then I think the easiest thing is just to start your understitching again going down. So now we have that side, the neckline. Let's fold our, make sure your tie is out of the way. So now we're going to just fold it so that this portion goes on top. And then we're just going to continue understitching but going down now. This is like the straighter portion of the, after the neckline. The understitching is all done. You can see that right there, and it's not visible on the main dress. Here is where we pivoted, and then this is up the neckline. You can see, so I'm going to give this a press. So it looks nice and crisp. That is all done for the facing and we are, we're getting there. Okay, so this is the side with the shorter tie. So this one, when I'm wearing it, will be on top. So I'm going to open up this one because the side with the longer tie, this tie needs to pass through somewhere. And that tie needs to pass through. We created the notches here at the very beginning. This is, where it's gonna go. So we have two options. I'm gonna put a pin just so I don't get confused which side the tie needs to pass through. It's the opposite of the long one. So not on the long side, but on the short tie side is where we need to open up. So the tie is gonna pass through this opening here. We have with our notches. So either you can come in and do some back tacking on the outer edges to secure this and then open this up with a seam over here or we can create a buttonhole opening, and this is going to be very durable. As I was saying, there are two options for making the waist openings. So for this one, you can either just back tack around, and then you can open up this portion in the middle, the little seam in between, and then you can put your waist tight through there, or you can use a buttonhole foot or make a buttonhole, and so I have already attached it to my machine. You have one of these, super handy. But really, you just need a button or to measure out a button about the size of the strap, because this is what needs to pass through the waist. So these are about equal in size. So I'm putting that into my buttonhole foot, and then I will do that from the right side with the side seams open and I will show you so it's a little bit more clear and then we're going to do a little buttonhole together. Okay, so I removed my normal foot and I'm putting on my buttonhole foot with my button nicely in there, which is a good size. Drop that in. Mine is 26 on my machine. The most important part is that I need to drop down this little thing here. I sometimes forget and then it doesn't work. So that's all good to go. 
I've gone back and re-sewn this up so it's as if we're still starting with the side seam all sewn. And what I'm actually going to do is I want to mark it so from the front side I'm able to see exactly where the notches are. You could do the buttonhole from the inside. It looks relatively similar, but I want the best part of the buttonhole, which is usually the front side, to be on the outside. So I'm going to mark it like this with these two pins, and then I'm going to flip it so I can see those two pins on the outside, on the side seam, and I'm just going to mark just a teeny bit with my uh, waterproof, not waterproof, offset, water-soluble marker. Actually, I yeah, will mark it like that. Like that. And then you can remove those pins. And then we're ready to create our buttonhole right in there. And you just want to make sure that the side seam is nice and open for this to work really nicely. Make sure you're starting, well, with my machine, mine goes up. So make sure you start at the bottom one. And then my machine is pretty automatic, so I'm just going to let it do what it wants to do. So now we have a very secure place to pass our tie through. Okay, so you can just get rid of these marks with water and a problem. But in order to get in here, either you need to have one of those fancy little button hole openers. Like it's like a cool little like wedge. And then you have like a little mat underneath. Or you just need some little snips to get in there. And then we're just... We have a beautiful tie opening. Ta Let's place the dress off to the side. She's looking at something, but this is the dress. <laughs> I'll fold it. Okay, so we're putting the dress off to the side, and now let's focus on the sleeves. I am doing a three quarter puffy sleeve. So we have two. And most important, I know my fabric kind of looks the same on the front and the back, but we want to make sure that we have. A right sleeve and a left sleeve and so you can tell with the notches a one notch is the front and a double notch is going to represent the back of the sleeve so i just want to make sure that we're going to end up with a left and a right so i'm going to fold those in half and you can see we have a front here the front here and they're both going in opposite directions so we're good. I'm going to pin here and we're going to sew using a half inch seam allowance. Let it go ways. Okay so I finished sewing the seam of the sleeve and I also finished it with a little serging but you could do it with a zigzag and now I am going to flip these right side out and then we're going to add some basting stitches into the top, into the very sleeve cap area between the notches. So we had, remember, those notches of the, the front is a single notch, and then there's actually a notch at the very top, and then there's a notch here. These double ones are the back. We're gonna sew some basting stitches around that curve and the basting stitches are just on the longest stitch length you have because we're going to want to gather that. So I'm going to, I'm going to go to my max which is five and actually I'm going to sew with my needle in the middle. I'll show you. I want two rows because I will gather the best when you have two versus one. You want to make sure you have long long threads to start with make sure they're nice and super duper long because if they're not you won't be able to pull very well and i'm actually going to sew really close to the edge because i want to keep it within the half inch seam allowance if you go outside it's okay you'll just have to remove them later but i prefer this so i'm going to be very close to the edge and focusing on the inner part of the toe And then we can stop. Make sure to leave a long red tails. One row, and I want a second one. Again, we want to make sure we have our long threads, and we're still using our longest stitch length. 
this time I'm going to have it on the outer part of the toe. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing and follow the curve. I'm going to the long thread tails. We're ready now because we have the basting stitches in place here. We have our two rows of basting. I haven't done any pulling yet, so I think it's best to then grab our dress. We're going to want the dress, so our, sh our shirt, our sleeve is right side out, and our dress, we're going to flip it so it is the wrong side is facing out like this. And now we need to figure out if this is our left sleeve or our right sleeve. So you can see we have two notches here. So this needs to go to the back. And we have one notch here. So this is going to be the notch that shows us it's the front. And in order to make these touch the right sides together, this is going to be the sleeve that goes over here. So I'm going to slide it there. And what we want to do first is to match, I like to use pins for this. We're going to match, we're going to match. I did the sleeve all together as one seam, so we're going to push it towards the back, but we want to stack these seams. So you can keep the side seam of the dress open, but the sleeve seam is pressed towards the back. You could press it open if you'd like. So we have that one matched. So we really wanna match our right sides together. And now I wanna find that top notch, top notch, and then match that with the shoulder seam. That goes there. I'm going to pin that. Okay. And now I am going to, we can pin this lower area should match without any real easing or gathering. That's looking good. And then we just need to get our notches to line up together. So here's notch number one. There is a teeny bit of ease down here at the bottom of the sleeve, but nothing that just can, a little bit of whoop, whoop, little pulling, can't get that totally straight. Unlike the sleeve cup, which is gonna have lots, lots of gathering. You can see that this is much too big compared to this portion. To this portion. So we're gonna do the same on this side before we start gathering. Okay, that's looking good. So now we have all, all of this needs to fit into the rest here, right? So we have a lot. So what needs to happen is we need to gather this. And I think the best is if I sit down and we gather together. Okay, I'm in a more comfortable position, so this is easier to do. Okay, so we have all of this excess. And in order to get the excess to fit, we are going to pull on well, to the bobbin threads here in order to create gathers in order to make this fit the same amount, to make it the same length. So don't worry about it being very equal spread right now. Just worry about getting the lengths to match. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So then I like to come in and grab all the threads. We're going to do a little figure eight knot here. Like this. Okay, and then we're going to then you can slide the gathers around and more equally distribute them. There's never there's never too many pins. And then I'm gonna do that again on this side. So now our sleeve 
is ready. It's all in there. And now we can go around and sew with our regular seam allowance. So you can either pop off your thing here and place the sleeve kind of around this. The only reason I don't love doing that is because I can't see the gathers anymore. I kind of like to keep my, my eye on them. So we have a big enough sleeve that we can start at the bottom here with our regular seam allowance. The sleeve is attached, so now we can just flip it to the right side and we can just double check that there are no crazy tucks or bunching in like a weird place or especially under here. Everything's looking really nice, so I'm going to go ahead and attach the other sleeve. We have successfully attached two sleeves. I also removed the basting stitches from both the sleeves. And this is how we are, are looking. It's just super cute. We got our little, our little adorable gathers. Okay, so I am just going to carefully um, overlock this section. I've gone in and carefully overlocked that previous seam. So now our sleeves are all done on the top area. And I also came, and this is totally optional, but I like to do it like this. I came to the bottom of the sleeve, down to the hem of the sleeve, and I have done an, an overlock stitch. It's about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit less. So I'm going to fold that over and press, and then we're going to fold over again a little bit more, and we're going to do three quarters of an inch. So it's going to end up being a, an inch less at the very bottom. I'm going to go press that now. Pressed. I pressed one quarter of an inch and then three quarters of an inch and then we're going to stitch really close to this edge but we do need to leave a little opening because we need to put in the elastic so maybe about two inches or three maybe about three inches and more comfortable whatever you want to do so I'm going to sew top stitch that basically right now and then we can add in the elastic. To determine how long your elastic should be that's going to scrunch in the sleeve you can either measure around your forearm that's you know just make sure it's kind of comfortable it comes to about here kind of the middle of your forearm make sure you leave a little seam allowance a little extra so that's what i'm pinching but i just want it to be comfortable i don't want it to be too tight uh, this amount is about 11 inches for me, so I that includes the seam allowance without stretching it. So I'm going to cut this at 11 inches, and then I'm just going to use that as my, as my guide for my next piece. Pop the safety pin on one side, like that. And then we just need to find our little opening. I left mine here. And then we'll just begin to maneuver that through. So now let's grab 
uh, two pieces. You can do that carefully to not lose our stuff. I'm going to put them together and then you can put them together and pin in place because I don't want to lose them as I'm undoing the scrunch or moving the gathers around. So if you just go like this a couple times, that really helps distribute the, the scrunch. I'm going to find my friends. Now we just need to take this to the machine and we're just going to sew half inch right there. And secure and then you can just bloop, that into place. And then the last thing that needs to happen is that this needs to be ladder stitch, invisible stitch to close that. And I'll do that next. This can be a little tricky doing the ladder stitch because it is a bit stretched right here. So I like to try to hold it as, you know, hold it kind of over my finger. And then we're just going to just a little bit of threads. The fewer, the better. And pull through. And then you're going to go through the tunnel of the sleeve here. And then you can pull that through and then you just are going to keep going. With the sleeves all done, then that really only leaves us with the hem. Okay, so there are, you could go the most obvious route, which would be to fold our hem up a half inch, another half inch, since that is the allotted seam allowance, which is an inch down here. But if you do that, it's pretty bulky right here on the facing. So I have another way I like to do that which I've already kind of warmed up on the other side to show you how. So what's gonna happen is you need to take it and you need to take your facing and flip it. So we have the dress, the facing, and we flip it over so that they are right sides touching. And then we're gonna sew an inch here, the full seam allowance. So from here to here, that's an inch. So that's what I did here. And then what's cool is you're just going to, you're gonna flip it like that. And you just wanna make sure it's all nice and smooth and you have a really nice crisp corner when you do that. So then look at that, it looks so nice on the inside here. And then we'll deal with the rest in a second. But so that was just me taking it and I flipped everything to the other side, just like that. What we're going to do now is we're, now we have the full hem, we're going to take it and we're going to fold it in half like that. And then we're going to be able to just stitch everything down. Okay, so it can be a little bit awkward here. So we, I have folded everything up and pressed. So now I have that inch of seam allowance here for the hem, but in here can be a little, little awkward to fold all the way. So let me just flip it out again. And I think the best way to handle, cause you see here it's a bit, like this portion is still attached here. I think the best way to go about this is actually to trim right in here along this fold. I don't want it to be bulky. So we're going to do that and that. And we can press this. And then once you press it, once you pressed it and you flip it, imagine I've pressed it already. And I'm just going to do it like we did before. And now inside, Inside looks a lot better. There you go. So all the way down is looking really flat. So that's good. And then there's not so much bulk. So this one portion is going to remain just the one inch. And the rest is going to be folded. And look how nice and thin that is. Still really, really nice. And that's how I would handle that corner. And then we're going to be able to finish the rest of this. And then sew uh, a little top stitch here. I'm actually going to start this not with a backpack. I'm going to have me 
some long threads and I'm going to just tie a knot. I think that's going to look really nice. If you can back tack, it's not a big deal. Just an idea. I've also increased my stitch length to 3.5. And there we go. finished the hem and that means I'm nearly done with the dress so I did say I left these long tails so instead of back tacking I just decided I thought this looked nicer totally optional I think I'll do like three not these and then I'm just going to trim as close to those as humanly possible start cutting the knot like that I have actually already worn the dress, but there are two little things that I think we can do to really secure the facing in place because some testers of mine found that it does have a tendency to kind of roll depending on your fabric type, but if you just want to make sure it's super secure, there are two things we can do. Okay, so the first is at the shoulder seam, the center back seam, and at the other shoulder seam, we can stitch in the ditch so that we're going to make sure that the seams are stacked on each other and we're going to just sew in that previous stitch line to really hold it in place and then the other thing we can do is do here's the facing on the inside we can do a few little strategic tacks to really just lightly hold this in place maybe one here and one on the neckline and that's going to be plenty so let me show you how to do that here is our dress so up here we have our shoulder seams so we have the dress one and the facing one so what we're going to want to do is those should already be nicely stacked on each other but we're going to just make sure those are super duper aligned and the way we can do that is by using a pin you can kind of feel through the fabric but you want to push through and see yeah if you're coming pretty much through the seam or not and if you're off by a little bit let's adjust just off by a teeny, teeny little bit. So you just want to get these seams as stacked as humanly, humanly possible. So that's looking really good. So I pinned it like this. And I'm going to do that for the center back seam. over to my machine and stitch in the ditch. I want to sew here, but someone else is already in my spot. Or make a new mochi. Do I need to wait for you or can I politely ask you to move? Oh, it looks like it's nap time. So you can choose how you want to focus on your thing. I think the center for me with this particular flip is better. You don't have to start right at the end. You can start a little bit in from the edge. And I'm just going to roll it down, see if we're really getting into the seam like that. You can also hand stitch this if you'd like. You can see here's my pin. I'm going to move that once I get closer. You will want to do the back tack here. Just like that. And then we're just going to on. I removed the pen. I'm just going to hold it all in place. Pretty good. Maybe not absolutely perfect right here, but I'm going to be honest, this is on my shoulder and not the main focus. So I'm probably just going to leave it as is. You can decide how perfect you want to be, but for me, this is good. honest with you it's it's not the easiest thing to do to get right in the ditch there and it looks great on the side which is the most important but if you're a little off on the inside and you're not really in the scene there it's okay it's okay for me so it's probably okay for you 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 decide the back is probably the most important one so if you're very off maybe consider redoing that that's looking pretty good to me and there's the other one Okay, so now we're going to do some strategic things on the facing, strategic tacks. 
Let's look at our facing. So here's the neckline. We're going to need a double, doubled up thread here on our needle. And it's ideal if you've given this a nice press. I've already worn this so you can see a little bit of wrinkles. But you just want to make sure this is laying how it should be. So maybe even pop in a pin or two. Okay, a couple pins and then let's flip it. And our goal here is to catch just the tiniest whisper of the actual dress fabric. You want to catch just a little bit because the more you catch, the more visible it will be on this side. So we're just going to do that. And then you want to come over to the facing and sew that too. And just do a couple of rounds of going through, catching a little bit of fabric, going on the facing. You need to find find where I did it, you know? And it's right, it's right here, right there not so obvious, you know, when you're looking at the whole thing. So I recommend doing that on the other upper part of the facing and on the straight away part. All done. Okay, so it's attached here. On the same, on the same. I did it the same way on the other side. And then I did for the neckline, I did one on each of the neckline sides. And that is all. That is a wrap on sewing the willow wrap dress. That was unintended pun. I am, I'm thrilled with this dress. I mean, I hope you got to see in the video. I think I just, I would put it right before me wearing this out and about. And if you know anything about me, I've already spilled pasta sauce on it. So if you can see that, just pretend you don't. I am super excited to wear this for the summer. I feel like it's so comfy and it just like feels really good. I'm super happy with this pattern and I hope you really enjoyed sewing with me today. And I'm actually thinking about making another tutorial using bias binding instead of the facing. So if you're interested in seeing that, let me know below. And then also in the description, I'm going to leave a little discount code for the updated Willow dress. And yeah, that's all. I hope you have a wonderful day and thank you for sewing with me.